This week, episode 325 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I have a interview with Dan Thompson. He is the president of McAuliffe Cigars. We've been talking about M- McAuliffe Cigars quite a bit here on the Stogie Geeks show. Um, M- McAuliffe Cigars is in the process right now. They've been working on this for, for weeks now of content on their website to help everyone struggle with the new normal of social isolation. They have contest. They also uh, have an ambassador roundtable that we are going to talk about. Uh, they also have a off the record interview series, and we are also going to talk about the McAuliffe Cigars Ultimate Inventory Program, as it's all explained here from the president of McAuliffe Cigars, Stogie Geeks, episode three twenty five starts right now. <laughs> This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 325. I am your host, Joe Hozempa, as we are all still in our new normal lockdown i am located in the bunker that i have dubbed this room here and joining me all remote via skype or zoom it's remote it's the little dark haired kid from texas drew how's it going over there Okay, we're okay, skipping here we go. from. Uh, oh, I, I was almost <laughs> gonna butt you out I'm, there. Go ahead, Drew. How you doing over there? Doing very well. Just uh, here in Dallas, Texas. You know, we're still under the uh, stay in place. You know, orders and uh, making uh, do with what we have here. You know, we're doing a little tailgate hearth tomorrow with just four people. <laughs> so we take our trucks, open our tailgates, and smoke uh, eight feet away from each other. So mm. that's pretty much mm. it. So I, yeah. I I do, uh, towards the end of this interview, want to take a little time out and talk about these virtual hearths that are all springing up all of a sudden uh, and whatnot. It's uh, pretty neat, but uh, it doesn't um, also uh, affect our industry. It's going on all over the place uh, as well. And uh, Zoom has certainly been in the uh, media as well from a safety perspective. I might give you a little bit of safety tips as well. Um, so you can watch out there and not be cyber photo bombed or room bombed and all of that stuff. But anyway, we are moving on to the interview. Today, we have the opportunity to introduce, who is remote as well, Dan Thompson. He is the president of McAuliffe Cigars. Dan, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Hey, Joe. Thank you for having me. It's uh, great to be on with you guys uh, live here from Fort Worth, Texas. Nice. Nice. Two Texans. I like it. It's going to be a great show then. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. Dan, McAuliffe Cigars, 
um, has started a bunch of programs. Uh, if you uh, Stogie Geeks, if you go to McAuliffeCigars.com, you have options there, right? You have uh, content to join their ambassador program. Uh, we have been saying here on the Stogie Geek Show for our listeners, if you ever wanted to inquire about being – a cigar ambassador, all you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com, click on that McAuliffe logo, and you can get signed up for the program. Uh, Dan is going to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about that program, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Ultimate Inventory program and some of the other creative strategies that they have been doing um, pretty much since like Q4 of, of last year, of last calendar year. Um, one of the things I like about McAuliffe Cigars and the business model there is they're bringing innovative, newer event-like technologies that can be better explained by Dan uh, here to the cigar industry. So, Dan, I want to welcome you, and we can start wherever you want to start. There's lots to talk about. Hey, Joe, thank you for all the hospitality and for covering some of the, the events and approaches that we're making here at McAuliffe Cigars. It's certainly a very exciting time for us as a company. You know, we're, we're changing from being a startup to really focusing on a long-term plan to be a top partner with the, the B&M retailers that we work with. And when you kind of make a decision that you want to be a top 10 partner, you work backwards and say, who do I have to invest in to be successful? And in our case, mm. we, we recognize that it was the retailers who are brick and mortar and uh, our friends who smoke McAuliffe. But in that set of friends, there's a special group called the McAuliffe Ambassadors. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, the retailers, some of them are online. Some of them are not online. Some of them have mixed feelings about being online. I've heard multiple stories. Uh, some are doing very well online. Uh, I have a few clients that are in the uh, premium tobacco industry that are clients of mine that are online that I'm doing the, their merchant service for and servicing their website and making sure that they were, they are up. And, you know, um, all pre-COVID-19, I think it's very important for the brick and mortars to really, really get themselves out there and not have such a... Well, I can't compete with some of the bigger outlets because they sell on volume. And, and the reality is, yes, you can. Um, you just have to be pretty selective as to what you offer online. I mean, there certainly is enough of space for the premium uh, cigar industry to sell like a McAuliffe brand through their brick-and-mortar retailers online – and compete because it certainly is a different offering than some of the really, really big box on online shops. Yeah. You know, I, I listen to your show regularly and I know you've been having this conversation about for a retailer who's a traditional B and M, you know, what part of their business could be online and how that would work with their regular business. So maybe I should just step back for a minute and talk about a couple of things that we think about as a leadership team here at McAuliffe and uh, how we frame out what the online and brick and mortar space looks like from our perspective. You know, and it's, it's one company's view of the world. Um, it's certainly maybe consistent across some other boutique brands, uh, but here I go. So when I think about online, there's a group of online retailers who are dominant online people. You know, you can think of uh, Cigar International, Cigar.com, some of the cheap cigar sites. And they're really cigar first online in their approach. Um, then there's a second set of uh, online companies, uh, Neptune, Smoke In, perhaps. Uh, you, you, people have their different favorite brands, which they also have a brick and mortar presence, and they seem to be doing both well. And then the third group, Joe, is who I think you've been talking about are traditional brick and mortars who maybe haven't established any footprint at all. And uh, McAuliffe Cigars, we're going through a transformation right now. We wrote an open letter so that people can know what our strategy was to be a top 10 retailer partner. And one of the problems that we just had to be very honest about is we have to do two, two things at the same time. We are going to be brick and mortar first because those are the people who fight for our rights to be able to smoke, who host us, who introduce smokers to brands. But we also have customers that don't have a brick and mortar anywhere near them. 
Mm-hmm. So in our case at McAuliffe, we I'm not I'm not ready to say the whole strategy yet, but but we're in progress of making some changes. And I could tell you some of the consequences. What that's going to mean is that some places where McAuliffe cigars are sold online today, we're going to wrap up those partnerships, say thank you very much, we appreciated what you did for us. But we're looking for a solution that provides price protection to the retail partners and at the same time, the magic word and provides people who don't have access to purchase remotely. And in today's Mm -hmm. environment where we're doing business with everybody, our brick and mortars are the losers because there's some of our online salespeople who over discount beyond what was what was agreed in our agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the the joy of online is that um, you can always make changes on the fly as you go, whether it be content or price or whichever. Um, I think that your approach is is definitely um, well warranted when it comes to protecting the 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 brick and mortars because the brick and mortar class of um, cigar owner is a wide gamut. And what I mean by that is mm-hmm. it can be someone who owns a cigar line, distributes his or her cigar has a couple of retail shops, maybe multiple retail shops. So they have a brick and mortar presence. They also have a cigar online, all lines. They've been online. They're uh, savvy in the industry. When they go to certain trade shows like PCA or the Formula I, uh, former IPCPR or the TAA, you know, they, they have purchasing power when they go to those shows. Uh, and then you and then you have all the ones in the middle that would fit there. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you might have a single owner, sole proprietor, LLC, who used their retirement money or used, um, you know, kind of created a second job with their cigar shop. I know a lot of cigar shops owners here in Rhode Island uh, or here in the Northeast where they have day jobs, but they also have a cigar shop, right? And and so you know it 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 all starts out, and and all of those B and M's kind of run anywhere in between. And obviously, business experience can vary, but I really think that your approach is super cool, especially with the Ultimate Inventory Program, because it kind of puts everyone on a level playing field, regardless of their tobacco experience or business shop owner experience, or more importantly, online experience, and gives them a chance to really be re- uh, represented. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate that, and I agree with your framework completely. Um, I'm very optimistic about where we can go, but Joe, mm-hmm. I'm a manufacturer, and I, I deal in the real world, so I want to give you an example of one of the the problems we encounter, so like your audience understands why I'm pissed off. I have contracts with some major online players, and it says you can't go below 10% of the manufacturer retail price. Mm-hmm. That's about price protection for brick and mortar. But what they do is they, they show that you can build a basket showing 40% discounts, and their lawyers tell me, they said, the contract doesn't mean that we can't show a 40%, but when the final purchase happens, it's only at 10%. So it's misleading. And I don't want to mm-hmm. have an environment. Our company, we want to stand on the merits of our product. We think with the Sanchez Gomez family that we've got a great set of traditional flavors that people enjoy. But I don't want to be hiding behind a house of mirrors with like pricing games. So that's, right. that's the group that I'm pissed off at. But let's get past that. And that's why I know that we can make a set of choices this year. And ultimate inventory is us first flexing our muscle because now we have a new business capability. For your audience who doesn't know what ultimate inventory is, we were going to release in the second half of this year a McAuliffe partner program. And it was going to have a different set of capabilities and benefits that would help brick and mortar stores compete in new and different ways. And I totally agree with your framework, going from somebody who kind of has a hobby cigar shop to, to very sophisticated brick and mortar stores. The whole gamut exists. But what we wanted to do was create capabilities for these stores. What Ultimate Inventory allows us to do, the original drawing on the board was so that if a customer comes to a store, they can say, I would like to buy, and they may say, McAuliffe, Medallia, and Toro. And if you don't have it on your shelf today, you either have to switch them 
to another Macau cigar, or sometimes we lose the cell because you don't have it in inventory. With ultimate inventory, the whole concept was you could say, yes, let me take your money to DA and it'll be drop shipped and sent to your house in two days. So you can always tell your customers yes, which I find is a very powerful trust building experience between a proprietor and their customer. And so on the back end, what we're doing is we're handling the packing and the distribution because we have a distribution center here that I'm sitting in the middle of right now. I've got giant humidors, you know, they look big to me, but mm -hmm. when retailers come and visit, they're like, holy shit, you have a lot of product. I'm like, yes, because we come from other industries and we don't want to be back ordered. Right. So with ultimate inventory, now they sell it on the front end and we bill the, the cigar shop 30 days after. So they get the free cash flow, not only of what they would have made on the product, but they didn't have any inventory carrying costs. And that's why we pulled it forward and launched it last week, because during this time of business uncertainty, we're like, we can't sit back. We may not have all the details perfect. We got to launch this thing because we have some B&M partners who count on us. So that, that's why we launched it now. I actually think that that's a great idea. And if I were, I used to own a cigar shop in the late 90s, all the way up until 2002. So it was 96 till 2002. Uh, I got out of it. Because my partner was moving a cigar shop that's still open now in Rhode Island, and they own the building, and you know it was kind of like you know now there were going to be more people involved. I was looking at the numbers, and I'm just like you know I'm out, right? It just it just it just you know we all had day jobs at the time. At the time I was with Corporate Xerox. At the other time, the other business partner was at a. Um, uh, higher end insurance company for uh, property and casualty stuff. The other one was a contractor. So like we we just we just didn't need it, right? And but but I look at my experience when I owned it. Technology wasn't even what it was today. I mean we were at 56k dial up modem. Um, we didn't have an online presence. Uh, we didn't have a bunch of cigar reps. We've had like three. And they would like uh, a guy from Altidus, uh, 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 Alto, uh, Alto Fluente, and like a broker. And then other than that, we, call, we called the company direct and said, you know, we need Xboxes of this. And then they shipped them and then away it goes. So the business model would change. The point of my conversation is that if I were a local brick and mortar now and you were offering this to me, I and, and with with the ability to get your messages out there quicker, either via a uh, newsletter, if, if if you have a cigar like a like a Mailchimp or Constant Contact or some sort of mail program oh. or social media, I would be totally taking advantage of this opportunity and pushing for that. My question to you is that with this COVID nineteen probably going to be the talk of the town through at least June. Hopefully we have some some easement and we can get out there, um, not in super large crowds, but there. Do you think there's going to be some some sort of a copycat syndrome from some of the other players as well? Because I think it's a great idea. It's interesting. Um, when we announced it, another cigar company, uh, somebody who's pretty outspoken, he immediately slammed me on Facebook and said, Hey, Dan, you're just trying to get consumer information so you can go direct. And it was funny I, because I was. Yes, I, I, I caught wind of, of that little text. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And it was funny <laughs> as hell because I was smoking his product on my patio at the top. So here sure. I am enjoying their product <laughs> and, and he's kind of <laughs> talking smack to me. And, you know, I oh. look at it as when people are talking smack, now we're in the game, right? Yes, so exactly. I wrote in this nice note back and I said, hey, thank you for letting me clarify. We're not doing this to collect consumer information. We have partners who have business problems. They're dealing with uncertainty. It's a very simple equation. We have inventory. They have customers. They can collect money. Why don't we just think about the problem a little different and help them get back in business? Yes. And uh, at the end of the comment, I, I sent him a note and said, you know, if if you can't ship out of your distribution center, I'll even help ship your product. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, you, you know, and not you, every you, manufacturer has the same inventory that we have here in the U.S. 
Mm -hmm. You know, Dan, you you bring up a lot of good points, and I want to have Drew uh, chime in here as well. You bring up a lot of good points. One of the points you make with that quick behavioral pattern, I see that a lot in the industry where um, they kind of get a little territorial and they don't want, you know, they don't want, you know, uh, oh, you're going to get credit card information from a consumer and now they're going to order from you. But it's like you're you're extending a olive branch at the moment, maybe something that could turn into a bigger program after all this crisis is over. It might make your lives easier for either your reps or brokers or however the, that you conduct business. Drop shipping is not new uh, outside of the cigar industry. Of course it's at all. not. I mean, I mean, <laughs> big box retailers do that. You know, if you go yep. if you go to Walmart.com or Target.com and it's not in this town, you know they're going to ship the product out of the other town because they want to get the money. It's all about capturing that market share. And and you know you don't want to sell one box to someone. You want to sell multiple boxes to a brick and mortar to help them out. But in the meantime, if it's one box, then it's one box. Or if it's two boxes, it's two boxes. At least it's getting the products in the hand and it's giving your partners a opportunity to get a little bit of cash flow. And hey. I'm assuming that the comp is going to be the same on their end as in if they bought the inventory and then do that. So it's like they don't have to outlay any cash and they can get – the credit as in if they sold it in the store, it sounds like a win-win. Yeah, they make the exact same margin. And actually their shipping cost, we're subsidizing the shipping cost. So it actually turns out to be a great deal for them. But you know, sometimes you gotta talk about what happens in your heart. There's one one of the brick and mortar partners in his community, because you know, across the country, the rules are being implemented differently. What what's right for New York City may not be right for what's right in Texas. You know, there's, there's regional differences. I have one brick and mortar partner who two weeks ago, they locked him out of his shop and said they cannot enter their shop. Mm -hmm. So he had zero cash flow opportunity. And with this program, he got on his phone. We helped him talk to his bank so that he could get a digital credit card uh, deal to process from his laptop. And now yep, for the he's able to sell, yep. he could sell our products out of his house to his existing customers. And, you know, sometimes when you're a customer, you want your B&M to be successful. You're like, I'll try a box of McAuliffe's. If it's good, let's do it because you want them to succeed. Yeah. Right. Right. Drew, do you have a question? I have more, but I don't want to hog all the time. I try not to. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, I would just, you know, it's just it's, it's very innovative in what McAuliffe is doing at this point. I mean, and, and for others, I think, I mean, this is a, this is a model that it's worth looking into. I know if I was a competitor, I'd, I'd be like, well, okay, that's, that's, that's a great solution. Uh, and then just, just roll with it. And, you know, it doesn't really, have, there's nothing there to change or make anything different. It's just, again, you're, you're reaching out to your, your customer base on behalf, you know, with, with the brick and mortar owner. And, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a win-win all the way around. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Dan, Dan, hey, I want to show this off. So I got this in the mail two days ago. All right. Congratulations. So I got my ambassador. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I was telling the uh, uh, the guys last week that I went on our Snow Geeks uh, uh, website and I clicked the uh, ambassador program, filled it out, and I was telling everybody how easy it is. Uh, and, you know, of course, I, I have boxes of my uh, big, bold, grande Lajero sticks here because uh, I love these sticks. These are phenomenal, and I, I do share them. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you're exactly right. If you'll go through the Stogie Geek site, it's one of the fastest ways to connect to our ambassador community. And Joe, I know that at some point you wanted to talk about what we were doing there. Um, yes. Separate from the ultimate inventory. Yes. Also, I want to, uh, at some point, uh, even pre-COVID-19, I wanted to uh, kind of, uh, I was going to work with this with, with Amanda uh, to kind of do an ambassador roundtable once your program is up and running. Not that it's not up and running, but to get some ambassadors so, so that they can share their experience. Because I think that um, most of the Stogie Geeks listeners, some of the older ones, the ones that have been around for probably 10, 15 years or more in the industry, are like, oh, wow, an ambassador program. I haven't seen one of those since we've had reps on the road, Right. And right, right. there's a bunch of business reasons why some of the people went with reps 
and didn't and, and kind of subsided from the ambassador program. Uh, I, I speak to partners um, for Stogie Geeks throughout the week or, or throughout the year, and I let them know of some of the programs that other companies are going on. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, we've had a bad experience with ambassador program. But I'm like, yeah, of co- OK, that's 10 years ago. Like, this is a new yeah. time. This is a new day. And I've been saying on Stogie Geeks for at least a year and a half now that cigar companies need to move towards an ambassador program, get back to an ambassador program, and get away from this social media influencer program and more of an ambassador to get out there and to cascade the message. That and the branding that the company of how the company wants to be represented. I think that that's going to be a huge catalyst moving forward. And now with COVID-19, I think that's going to be an even bigger impact where more companies need to bring back their version of whatever an ambassador program is. So that being said, if, if, if you want to pivot from there, um, we, we can certainly do that. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the ambassador program. I did not sign up. Drew told me uh, last week or the week before that he signed up. Um, I, I'm 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 going to sign up for the ambassador program for sure. Uh, I, I think that uh, it's needed, and and you know uh, I don't like to sit in studio or sit behind a microphone and say you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that, you need to do that, and not do it myself. That's just not my speed. You know, having I was an ambassador um, many y- moons ago for Romeo and Julieta and for Upman. So and again, this is going pre cigar shop days. So this is like ninety four, five, uh, maybe ninety six. As I owned the shop, I kind of sub- subsided from from being an ambassador for that. And it was super cool to have her. They shipped us product. We got excited about stuff. And, and, and it kind of led that business methodology led to my resurgence of when I started Cigar Club Radio, which then turned into Stogie Geeks uh, here of, of some of those ambassador like events that I did when I was on the terrestrial radio here uh, here in the province metro. Yeah, no, I, I'd be happy to do it. And Joe, we certainly want to bring you in and onboard you into it. And you let us know when you want to do an ambassador roundtable on your show or you come on our shows. Uh, we move fast, so you just let us know when you're ready to go. Yeah, um, uh, I will sign up today. So, And then you okay. can communicate email yeah. and do that we'll, there. Yep. We'll take care of that. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a step back. So Macau Cigar started Gomez Sanchez family. Um, we, we were able to build a partnership between an entrepreneur and some blenders, we had great sticks. We were very, very fortunate there. I was always an outside director. When I stepped in and became president, one of the things we knew that we wanted to bet on, and this is what's so funny, it's a combination of being super simple and also having experience from other industries. I don't know the history of the ambassador programs that you just listed, Joe. There's probably things I should know, but but I don't know how that went down. So. What we're calling ambassador, it may be kind of different than those traditional approaches, but let me share with you what we're doing. Okay. We know know as a company that the best way to have a person start trying and buying Macau cigars is when their friend gives them one or recommends it. Mm -hmm. That's the most powerful way to get people introduced. So we began with that premise and we said, how do we programmatize that? And we recognize that there's two different personas, for lack of a better word, people who are in cigar shops that love to be in technology and do stuff online. And there's a lot of people who are in cigar shops that are just a little more classic or traditional. They're, they're very influential in their shop, but they, uh, they don't do much online. So with those points in mind, we set it out to build the ambassador program. And you just like you said, you can go to Stogie Geeks, sign up. Um, we ship you a certificate and a coin. We put you on our email list. Now, for guys who don't do much online, that's how we communicate with them. We talk about the, the different events that we're doing. We're talking about changes we're making in our business. It's their opportunity to also provide us feedback through that. They can send us notes saying, I'm ambassador, so-and-so. This is what I've got going on. We are super grateful for the traditional P 
people who, who don't do the online because we pick up not as quick and easy, but we've picked up some really important conversations that have helped us run the company better. The second group are the people that we bring into Facebook's private group. Now, inside that group, there's, there's right at 2,000 ambassadors today. In that forum, and Joe, you'll know this from doing any kind of online work, we're running at about 93% of the people hit our page and go through content every week, 93%. Mm. That's awesome. So maybe we caught lightning in a Bible, caught lightning in a bottle. I'm not sure. But we're centering it around three things when we talk about it internally. We think of the ambassador program, especially once we have you on the Facebook page, as a way to, to communicate, content, and collaborate. And the communication was the first part that was important because we were able to learn um, what people were smoking, how they viewed different blends or viatolas in our cigars. It gives people a way to, to showcase once they become an ambassador. Um, it was really cool because it allowed ambassadors to connect with each other when they traveled to different cities. There have been a lot of friendships that have been around it. So communicating and, and connecting were kind of the essential heart of it. Now, the way that we use it as a business leadership team is every post that, that occurs um, becomes information for us about how to run the business better. You know, somebody says, I don't have a store locally. Somebody says, hey, some problem happened. Um, and then our leadership team actually brings questions to the ambassadors and says, if we were building cigars, what sizes and shapes? What do you think you would like about this or that? And so when we get into our, our weekly kind of uh, executive team meeting, I've got a large TV here in the conference room, and we, we pull up all these pinned conversations, and we read through what the ambassadors were saying. So it's kind of like bringing two or three of them to every executive meeting that we have, where the ambassadors are weighing in on our strategy in terms of our products or our business. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it, it's... Um... Forgive me for my ignorance here. Uh, I, your sales force, non-ambassador, is that done through brokers, or are you doing that all in house, or is that territorial, or no, no, how are you actually question. doing that? Yeah, it's a great question, um, and it's evolved over time. Um, today, okay. we are predominantly an in-house sales force, so okay. Northeast, Chicago, Midwest, Texas, Southeast. Um, I'm hiring in Florida and in the Carolinas. In California, we actually use a distributor. Um, he's, he's the predominant distributor on the West Coast. Um, so we're primarily an in-house business in terms of our sales execs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the reason why I'm asking is, is it, it populates a question, right? Because if you have it in-house, you now can give that sales rep content as to for a branding identity, how you want to roll out the product. You can keep com some consistency over the rollout of any product, any product announcement there. It stays consistent than if it was with a broker, right? Not that I'm anti-broker. It just there's different because a broker can, can represent your company and 10 more as well, right? So the methodology changed, but the ambassador is now – it's extra um, boots on the ground, if you will, to bring that mm -hmm. brand awareness. And I solely agree with you that in certain shops, there are influencers that say, hey, what do you normally smoke? I want to try something new. And if you have a couple of ambassadors, and again, this goes for even if you're not McAuliffe, if you have a couple of ambassadors there, like, hey, you should try this. Oh, I never tried that. What do you think? Well, here. Here's one or here's two or or you can get it at this shop down the road or, or whatever. And, and, and now you can control how that is distributed and get them all on the same page, which I think is super important for yeah, any company. You know, in our, our leadership team, I've got Amanda McAuliffe, who's our vice president of marketing. It's Al's daughter, who spent 20 years in L.A. in the movie industry and in social media. And she is one kick-ass executive. We've got Andy Yaffe, who's our national sales director, um, very strong uh, premium cigar industry uh, experience. And I've got Alan Davis, who's the president of our factory in Nicaragua, who uh, global supply chain. 
Now, when we come together as an executive team, what I wanted to say is we treat product launches with incredible confidentiality. And recently we launched the new Macau Maduro to be named as an example. And mm-hmm. this is where kind of all the threads come together. So it's fun. The ambassador community was one year old and Amanda came in and said, why don't we let the ambassadors name the cigar? And Alan, the, the president of production, he's like, oh, geez, I've got boxes and bands to finish. And he <laughs> struck a deal <laughs> across right. the leaders. And Alan graciously agreed, says, okay, I'll have all the cigars rolled. We'll only bring in a certain amount and we'll launch them. And Andy's thinking, you want to launch a cigar with no name and let your ambassadors name it? And after he thought about it, he goes, he goes, I've never heard of this, but this is going to be fun. So we launched the cigar. And this is what's insane and in how the ambassadors also help amplify our relationships with retailers. We sold out of that cigar in 48 hours. Nobody had sampled mm. it. Nobody had seen it. We didn't even have time nice. to drop it, to press, to sample. And our sales team, I kept the information from them until the Friday before Monday. And Monday morning, they were going to have their sales training, and we were sold out Tuesday at noon. Nice, mm. nice. So it, it, it bared fruit, and 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 I think it's 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 an amazing move. And the fact that you're using technology to do it. So even under these circumstances here, you're keeping all your ambassadors safe. You're keeping all your employees safe. You're moving sticks, which is important because that's how you keep a business live by moving product, getting product in the hands of consumers who who, who purchase it there. Um, and then also ha- making it to be named is really genius from an ambassador perspective because now they have skin in the game as opposed to, you know, um, here's, here's some sticks, here's some samples. Now they can, you know, and you never know about the, the creativity factor. I'm sure you've gotten some pretty rowdy names, uh, there, you know, for sure. But yeah, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it, that's one of the things that I really like about McAuliffe cigars as well is, is you bring a lot of, um, innovative practices, uh, there. And I'm, I really hope that the brick and mortars and the ambassadors and everyone who's in your circle of influence that you have contact with really take advantage of those programs because um, some of them I think are um, really innovative and some of them I can see where they might be like, oh, I don't know if that's a super good idea, but maybe we should try it and 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 stuff like that. And I think that it, that innovation is really, really needed. Cause I've been saying for the past two years on story geeks, the industry needs something different than a buy three, get one event that <laughs> triggers. No, it does. It, it just does. I mean, it's just so watered down. I mean, we, when I owned the shop again, it was a different time. We did two events a year, right? They were golf trips. We went to the Poconos. So we rented a bus and we got a bunch of, you know, I'm making the number up, five, six, seven cigar companies who gave us cigars for their promo, right? Some of them even kicked in for to help with the bus so that the shop did. And we just did a golf tournament and just golfed for, for, for a four-day weekend, including a bus ride, hotel. Of course, they had to, you know, kick in money for the, for the hotel part, part, part of it there. But some cigar shops are, like, surviving on events, and that's a dangerous business model and a dangerous path to go down, especially in this day and age. You don't know when you're going to be able to put 70 people in a room again. And and I know a bunch of brick and mortars who are doing them like every three weeks of a different brand. Sure. You know, yeah. the to be named and naming it with the ambassadors was actually a uh, experiment for us, but it was a gate in our business planning process. We, we are working on a concept for 2021 that's pretty audacious. And we have a lot of work to finish on the FDA filings to be able to complete it. But what we discussed as a leadership team is if the ambassadors have skin in the game and they get behind us and our retailers do on naming a cigar, what bigger ideas could we do in the future? 
And mm -hmm. we, we like to have big, bold ideas. And we have one and we said, okay, let's do the naming of the cigar and see how that goes off before we do this next thing that we want to do, which is a hell of a lot more audacious. And mm -hmm. um, the confidence that our ambassadors and retailers have given us, you know, we are, we are in it now to do something big in 2021 with the ambassador community um, that only people from outside the industry would have come up with. You know, mm -hmm. you just, you have to come from a different place and get excited about the magic of the industry and the tradition, but then think about how could we do it in a new way? So I'm really proud of the team. Ha very happy about the results with the to be named. Uh, it's, it's a great cigar. It was done in consultation with ambassadors and the retailers. There's, some pricing work that we did with retailers that helped made it be successful for them too. I don't want to miss that fact because if they're not making money, then it's not a model that works for them. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of great things came together for that. And it's given us the confidence to, to be even more audacious in the future. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, take us through, if you go to McAuliffeCigars.com, Stogie Geeks, um, Take us through the off the record series of interviews. What's that all about? Yeah, absolutely. So when when COVID nineteen happened, uh, I think that it really got serious for me on a Friday, maybe two two and a half weeks or three weeks ago. I don't remember. Um, but by Sunday, the executive team had gathered and said, "What are we going to do?" You know, there was a moment of panic, um, and then we laughed. And we said, well, let's do what we do best. Let's just like go out with some big ideas and we'll keep the ones that work and we'll drop the ones that fail. And uh, the decision was made since we couldn't have people on the road that we would view ourselves as a uh, content company for the next couple of weeks. And the programming for the content company was a, a project called uh, McAuliffe Madness. Uh, a couple of our guys were upset because they didn't have NCAA brackets to run and bet on. So they developed a bracket system and found a solution. We've got about 250 ambassadors playing that right now where our own cigars are competing head to head against each other. And people turn into a cigar center at 10 a.m. and they get the updates on how the voting came out. They discuss, you know, which of Viatolas are moving into from the suite eight to the final four. So McAuliffe nice. Madness is one. The second one is uh, ambassador roundtables. I think that's the place that we haven't quite nailed it yet like I would like to. Uh, two hours after I finish this call, I'm going on and I'm, I'm hosting ambassadors directly. And we're just trying to really have some discussions about what they love about Macau, what they could do better, uh, and let them highlight themselves. Our ambassadors are incredible people. And, you know, and they have businesses that they're running too. So we want it to be kind of uh, highlighting ambassadors as human beings highlighting their businesses as a marketplace and uh, talking about, you know, what, what we talk about when we sit and smoke cigars. So yeah. uh, that will continue to get better. But I think the one that we've really hit well is every night at seven o'clock central, we're doing something called off the record. And we said, Hey, why don't we bring in our friends from around the industry who run other companies or other media companies and, Let's talk to them about their business because our ambassadors, just like us, smoke different brands. So we've had LFD in, we've had uh, uh, Espinosa, John Tronio was on the other night. Um, we've had several different guests from across the industry, and we have several more coming. But we do this off-the-record interview that's a, a slower format, and we get to talk about them as a human being. We kind of ask them about 10 questions like, like they did on Inside the Actors Studio where you kind of learn sure. how the person thinks and talks. Um, and then we mm -hmm. talk about some things that impact us all. And off the record has been a hell of a lot of fun. We've got to get you on, Joe, because I know that you would be great off the record. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that so that off the record is part of the ambassador benefit if the Story yeah, Geeks listener the goes and signs up. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, we chose, um, we chose off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 please continue. Go ahead. We chose off the record because, you know, you guys who own your own podcast and work with your audience. We wanted you to have somewhere where you could come and like actually air out something that might be on your mind or heart. So that's why we're calling it See, off the record. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, <laughs> when, when, when I'm on Stogie Geeks, I, I'm, I'm off the record, but I'm on the record, right? Um, it, I, I, like I said, I've been saying for, for years that um, the big trade show in Vegas – needs to change the format needs to change uh i've been saying that uh events need to change we need innovation we need innovation it really it really has to come through um you know uh now to really stand out not only as an industry but all of these different brands that are available for us consumers you know we we really need to to um uh, get creative. And, and that's one of the things that I love when I get a press release from Amanda, uh, who, who sends me information on your, on your company. And, you know, I'm like, wow, that's a pretty cool idea. Um, some of them I'm like, Ooh, I don't know how that's going to work. I'd like to, to learn some more information on that. Uh, specifically, uh, I believe it was November or December. I got a press release about, um, the Predex program that you were launching. And I did an episode on Stogie Geeks. It wasn't off the record. It was obviously on the record where I kind of had a bunch of open-ended questions on that. Um, where do you stand? And if you can explain um, uh, right quick about that program uh, as well, because I think certain nuances of that program will probably be excellent takeaways for your company moving forward um, or other companies moving forward, but especially when there is uncertainty with the predicate date, uh, what's the time, what's going to be the time frame or the uh, FDA charge, or is it going to go out of FDA now and go to a different committee? That, that, that's been an, a, a wide open topic that I started in 2015 when I heard about it, uh, and I've been talking about it ever since. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. So let me just start with a little bit of background so the conversation makes sense for everybody. The FDA is regulating the cigar business now. Um, if you had a cigar that was on the market before 2007, it's called a grandfathered product. You can continue mm -hmm. making and selling it. Um, if you have a cigar that you made that was like maybe a different shape, but the same blend, you can file something called a substantial equivalent. And a substantial equivalent, they want the, the wrapper, the filler, the binder, the size, and, and you can bring that to market. Um, and then there's a pathway called new product introduction. Um, to keep the conversation short, the only two options that are really available for us in the cigar industry, whether you like regulation or you don't, are gonna be grandfathered predicates or substantial equivalent. Mm. The idea behind Predex um, is coming from a different industry that's been regulated. Al McAuliffe was in the automotive. Um, I come from high tech. We have seen different solutions. As industries mature, it's natural for regulators to step in, and you can fight them like hell, or you can say, how, for my business, am I going to optimize this so that I achieve a positive relationship with my regulator? And at the same time, I can really focus my time and energy on innovating and serving my business partners and customers. And that's certainly the approach that we want to have. And what we've observed in industries from aviation, oil and gas, high tech, is it's very common that there's a certain set of standards that often are patents that get fought over across the industry where they're pooled together into a single organization and then they're shared across the, multi the, the players because you wanna build products focused on differentiation. But if there's common necessary uh, information or protocols, or in our case, it's gonna be predicates, um, many industries have shared those so that they can like really focus on how they innovate and serve customers. So the goal with Predex was to introduce an idea to the premium cigar industry. And we, we certainly are coming with tremendous amount of humility um, we're, we're a new organization in a long-standing industry. We're humbled to be here. We're very respectful of the other companies that are in it. But we also know how to work in a regulated environment. And if you think that you can just legislate and litigate and lobby, um, you, you're going to come up losing. 
And so as exactly. a business leader, yep. as business leaders, let's take back control of the situation and say, what licensing solutions can we do between each other? So maybe, maybe you negotiate straight out license and you pay for it. That's a very painful way to do it. Maybe it's better to pool the predicates. What's incredibly important for your audience to understand is the predicate is the description of the cigar. It is not the blend recipe. It's not the curing and fermenting processes. So if I have a predicate and another company licenses it from me or I just give it to them to use, our cigars are going to taste very different because every year we start with the natural product and we have to tune every year the natural God-given material that we have into a cigar that's consistent for you as a consumer. So we've, we've been doing this for years. That's not a problem. And by the same token, it, we can share predicates and you can come up with, you know, 10, 20, 100 different cigars that are all different. They just happen to share the same wrapper, binder, and filler components. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, but again, it kind of goes up there with the, um, with the program of the ultimate inventory, some of the cigar either manufacturers or bigger companies or other ones, I, I, they their solution might be, um, well, let, let me just go against the regulation. And you really hit the nail on the head when um, – and, and you brought like a whole new clarity for me um, – when you said, like, if you think you're going to try to anti-regulate a government entity, you're going about it the wrong way. You have to learn to work with that government entity the best way you can. It's kind of like if you're if you're on the floor of and you're speaking to government and you're talking about jobs or potential loss of jobs if they regulate this product – and you're crying poverty, but you're sitting on millions of inventory, millions of dollars of inventory, or millions of dollars in product of inventory, or millions, some cases, um, you know, bigger uh, farms that are out there tr trying to go there. It, 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 the, it, it's almost like it falls on deaf ears, right? At least from my experience with with working with Congress. My first professional job pre-Xerox, I had a chance to work for, for the United States Senator here uh, here in Rhode Island, who's still a United States Senator uh, there. And, 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 and it was, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Like the way that works and how the show flaws. And, and I remember uh, it reminds me of a time when uh, I believe it was about two years ago for the fiscal budget in Rhode Island, they wanted to change the taxation of OTP, right? The, the other tobacco products. And um, they were going to do something different for vape, something different for uh, cigarettes, uh, and something different for the tax of premium cigars. And we all came together. And there was probably 80 of us in the room, right? There was someone from the uh, Chamber of Commerce who handles the retail gas station industry. And you know, they were like, well, 60% of the sales for gas stations comes from cigarettes. And if you up the thing, it's going to help their business, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. And all, out of that group of 80, here's my point. One person turned around and said, I don't think you should tax this at all. And this is why. And everybody looked at this guy as like, you're going against the, it the whole way. And, 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 and it's like he was telling them that, you know, that even the tax now that is in place in Rhode Island – is a little bit out of sorts to increase that is going to hurt some of the consumers. But then the government legislative body who was making that consideration and decision, ultimately they decided to just keep it the same for the um, cigar portion, for the premium tobacco cigar portion of it. They kept that tax the same in Rhode Island. They upped the vape tax and they did up the cigarette tax a little bit, but it came down a little bit. But it's like they 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 were they were kind of going about it the wrong way, all of them. And it's like it's like I, I was almost like cringing in my seat, saying like you guys they're, they're going to look at it as you know it is what it is. We got to get the money from somewhere. We got to figure it out, and that's what this committee is trying to do. And 
to me, it almost fell on deaf ears. All they did was 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 kick the can down the road for another fiscal year. It's on the table again this year to raise the tax. They're most likely going to raise the tax, and away you go. You know, so it, it it becomes pretty hard if you're trying to butt heads with that entity as opposed to try to take a reasonable approach and sit down with them and talk about the regulation, what you can and can't do, so that businesses now have a new protocol about how to move forward in a regulated industry. Does that make sense? It absolutely does make sense. And the thing that I would point out, and I'm just going to be candid about it, as a boutique company, I have shared problems (laughs) with other boutique companies. The largest multinational tobacco companies, they have a different set of strategies and problems. And so when we of think course. about PredX, we're going to have different people who are going to want to come together and collaborate. And we have other people who don't want it to succeed. That's okay. We're going to find our friends and collaborate with the cigar companies that have similar strategies and the same problems to help each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. So, so it sounds like you guys, regardless of, of like, how did this whole COVID-19, did this put a damper in on your products? Or it sounds like you were, you were ready to make all of these innovative changes regardless of this whole stay at home, work from home actions that were or restrictions that were, we, we are all facing now. Yeah, we just had to reach out into the future of the playbook that we were going to implement. You know, I didn't know that it would happen now. I thought this would be something we'd be doing in the second half of the year. And so we just pulled it forward. And, um, you know, business-wise, it's very difficult for us today, just like it is for each of our retail partners. That's reality. But we're committed to the long game on this. And we think that by bringing the innovation that we can do today and actually begin executing on it, it's just going to make us stronger for the long term. So it's uh, unfortunate circumstances. It's financially difficult for all of us. Um, but we're here for the long run and we want to make sure that the promises that we made to retailers and consumers in the industry that that we follow through on. That's awesome. Drew, do you have a question? No, I'm over here trying to figure out why my dog is barking so much. (laughs) That's all right. Uh, That's all right. No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah. It's like working from home. It's like, uh, all kinds of things are going on. Uh, no, I'm just, you know, I'm looking forward to getting on later with, with you guys on that round table. Uh, you know, now that I, I, cause I did, I did, be, uh, become part of that Facebook group. So I'm looking forward to getting into there and then, uh, and then take that and, and, and distribute that content to my audience, uh, who are interested in becoming part of the ambassador program. And I, I implored them. I said, look, you know, you know, with, with, you know, this is just the beginning, uh, just like, you know, with anything else, uh, you know, with Yelp and, you know, all the other uh, platforms that are out there that you can leave good comments on. Uh, you know, I definitely want to, you know, put this out with my friends. I mean, they we all smoke the product. We all enjoy the product. Uh, we all have our favorites. And then we have the ones that we're just kind of, you know, we're dancing, you know, together with it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to getting into that with you all and, uh, you know, sharing that with, uh, with our audience. Awesome. Well, thank yeah, you very Dan, much for you, that. You've, you, you've brought a lot of clarity to a lot of questions that I've had uh, trying to navigate through all of the press releases that I got and and really navigate through all of the activity. I can tell you um, with all certainty, I mean, we obviously get press releases all the time from from, from companies, but I, I, I really th- love these innovative approaches that you're using in these out of the the premium cigar brick and mortar box solutions that you're bringing the table yeah. uh, and and bring yeah. it to the table because I believe that when you have two people or more engaging in a conversation, now you're going to begin to open up dialogue and possibilities about the potential as to how to move forward in an innovative manner uh, to navigate through more regulation of stay at home. Uh, events, all of the obstacles that we kind of took for granted up until about three weeks ago when it came to the premium cigar industry. I mean, you know, uh, now we're, we're going to get a whole new set of regulations um, from a social behavioral perspective that we're all going to have to 
uh, do our best to comply with. But more importantly, the businesses are going to have to pivot um, and do this relatively quickly uh, as best they can. Yeah, Joe, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. If there was something that I just kind of wanted to summarize with, you know, it's incredibly yes. important. We've had to launch some things a little faster than I would like to, and that's okay. I mean, we're learning and I like to go fast, but I don't want this key yeah. message to be missed. And that message is McAuliffe is committed to a, to a business model and channel that's brick and mortar led. And that's how we're going to make our investments. And that's our goal to be a top 10 partner. Now, what we'll do inside the innovation box are ways to make those brick and mortars more successful. Ultimate inventory is one. There's three other ideas on the drawing board. Um, but it's all about the success of the brick and mortar in the channel and how we, how we sell. And we'll balance that with an online presence or two for our people who don't have access to brick and mortar. But our energy as a company is focused on the success of the brick and mortars. Yeah. And wanting Amen. to set a goal of a top 10 competitor um, just to ex explain and, and make sure that we're on the same page. You basically want or are pushing for 10% of the revenue of that brick and mortar to have a presence around the McAuliffe cigar line, correct? You know, that's, that's one way we've discussed defining it inside of our executive team. Um, to be honest with you, I, I think that if there's a slightly different uh, view, that okay. is, is what we're actually going to shoot for. Um, I think when you define revenue as your goal, uh, you miss the upstream effect that needs to happen. Um, what I mean by that is I want, you know, if we have 400 stores today, maybe in the future we have 800 or we have 250. I don't know. What I do want to know is that when they sit down and they talk about who are the top 10 partners they value working with, that mm -hmm. we're in that list. Gotcha. I believe, gotcha. I believe that the economics will follow that relationship versus just trying to be a budget hog and say, hey, I need at least 10%. Our priority yep. is actually going to be set at how can we be one of the top 10 people that you want to work with and make decisions around. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got a couple more minutes because that's actually a fascinating point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm happy to roll with you as long as you uh, like. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, the methodology of some cigar companies is they have barriers to entry to get their product on the shelf. And I know some of them are really, really higher because they can be, um, and others are shooting for that business model as well. And some of them kind of, you know, I don't know, sometimes the, they kind of put the cop be before the horse. We, you know, let's get some product in there. Let's get some traction, and then let's put together a plan with your business um, brick-and-mortar partners, retail partners, to expand – the line and to make it more profitable for everyone who's involved. I think that's a better methodology than doing the barrier to entry. You know, I need a 10 box order or a 15 box order, or some of them throw a dollar amount. Like, you know, I do know that some shops, there are $60,000 buy in, yep. got to be in a separate humidor and whatnot, and it's got to be this color. And we're going to ship you the signage and shelf talkers and all of that stuff. And, and you know, it, it, it kind of – you don't know if your – the B&M might take a chance on that. But what if their consumer is just not at that level yet? What if they like a different approach so, for the cigars and whatnot? So, so the, uh, I think so, it's a great so, way to go. Here, here's what we're going to do. Um, we recognize that there's companies who have been in the industry for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They're going to have their own approaches. Um, we're mm -hmm. with a family that's been blending tobacco for nearly 70 years, but we really haven't capitalized on what you know as Macau today. So it's very simple for us. We want to engage with the retailers, and we are coming up with different solutions. You know, For example, in California right now, I've got a promotion where they get some sleeves of sample packs, and then they take the four facings. And it's a way for us to introduce the product into their customer base. You know, it's a buy three, get one free. And then the facings exist for that retailer so that we can build and test together what's right for their store. Um, that's an example of how you build the partnership and trust and confidence versus saying, 
hey, these are the arbitrary business rules that we have. You have to pay or you can't play. Um, mm. I've, I've been on both sides of the table and I understand both strategies. But where we are, we're here, we have the resources to be here for the long run. And we want to build the relationship where their customers discover our products. We have the ambassador community to help accelerate on the consumption side. And then with the retailers, we want to be able to help them step up the facings that they carry in the store. And then with ultimate inventory, you know, it's funny, for example, we've got a, we've got a Modafina product that's the bold. It comes in a 60 ring mm -hmm. gauge, one of the five facings. I don't smoke 60 ring gauge, but I have friends who do. And one of the stores I go to doesn't have the 60 ring gauge facing. Well, now that, that retailer can say, yeah, I'll have it for you in two days. No problem. Right. So um, right. we think that it's all about building trust and confidence with, with the retail partner. And that, that will be our approach for the long run. Right. Right. That's awesome. Well, I definitely want to invite you back. Uh, I don't want to end the show quite. I want to spend a couple minutes and get your take and Drew's take on virtual hrefs just because it seems yeah. to be the, the uh, theme um, there. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, Dan, don't be a stranger to Story Geeks. I, I think that your updates and your business acumen – and what you bring to the table with these innovative ideas is super cool and it's much, much needed for the industry and, and hats off to, to you and, and, and Mr. McAuliffe for making that happen. Cause you guys came on the scene pretty quickly, uh, oh, yeah. in my opinion, and you've made a lot of headlines pretty quickly for, you know, I'm not saying that you're the new kid on the block, but you know, um, some people have, have, had a, a hundred or seventy year head start for sure. Well, thank you very much. And you know, it's it's a lot of fun to be able to to lead and represent this company for the McAuliffe family. Al is a blast to work with. I hope that you know you guys can meet him one day. Uh, perhaps if we do something up in the Northeast, we can make sure that we connect with you. Uh, and then the team that operates underneath me, uh, we just get better every month. So I'm I'm really yep. proud of them. So I'm happy to be here representing, but it's truly a team effort. Yeah. Is is Al in Texas as well? Geographically? Yeah, Al lives about five minutes from my house. So okay. typical day yeah, yeah, is cause... we do our work here, and then he and I get together in the afternoon and have a cigar and debrief on the day. Yeah. After this is over and we can fly again, um, you know, uh, I have a planned family trip to go down to Texas as well. Uh, I'm staying at Drew's house. Host you. Drew, you better get a bed ready. I'm bringing the family. <laughs> oh, no problem. I get you guys a suite. <laughs> I, I got, I got, I got you. Know? Your, I got your suite already. No, I was there's just no, going to let you know. There's no need got, to set an alarm. Could, we're we're up at 5:44 every morning with little Caden, right. so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Dan. Yeah, I come down 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 there to the Riata and. I've bumped in now a few times. As a matter of fact, we just did the uh, Cigars and Spirits uh, magazine deal down at Panther Island with y'all. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, of course, I run into him sometimes at Silverleaf, <laughs> his, his, his hiding place. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, yeah, I like, I like, you know, we're, we're neighbors. I mean, like, I'm here in Irving. Uh, uh, and, yeah, we, you know, we bump, we bump elbows every once in a while when we're down in Fort Worth. So please don't nice. be a stranger. We'd love to see more of you. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, most so, definitely. So guys, this as as virtual herf, what what it's like it's like I'm getting like Facebook DMs or PMs. I don't know. It's, I think it's called a, a PM on Facebook and a DM on Twitter, whichever. They're they're messaging me saying, you know, go on these virtual herfs and do this there and whatnot. Have you guys participated in any of those? Yeah, so virtual? we're hosting some. Go ahead. What? Excuse me. Yes, and we're hosting some. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so those been su successful for you guys? Yeah. I, so there's kind of two extremes that I've experienced. One is where it's uh, seven or eight people. Uh, you know, some ambassadors just got together and they dropped me an invite and they go, "Hey, you want to join us?" And so I just drop into their herf and it's been a lot of fun. I had some guys from Boston last week, and uh, you know, it's always amazing how different we are as a country. And to jump on those, it's like traveling in a time machine so it was mm. a lot of fun oh, yeah. and then on the other hand there have been some where uh people just talk for a very long time about things that don't interest me and so i tried to withdraw from those i love meeting engaging <laughs> with people but i like to do things uh 
with purpose versus just bullshit all the time. So yeah, but that's me. I'm I, quirky. Yeah, no, no. I think it's a, it's you know you 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 know time is is precious for all of us, and and I, I I think it's 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 a great idea to lighten a a, a lot of spirits up and 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 having the ability because let's face it, like we're all human beings. Um, most cigar smokers that I know of, especially the ones that hang out in brick and mortar, they're not introverts. They don't, you know, there's a couple who just boot up their computer and have their face in their computer or read a book and use that time. And then, but, but most of us really uh, like kind of like a social butterfly and our wings have been clipped for at least three weeks now of, in, of, <laughs> of inconvenience. And I could see where a lot of people would just kind of go off in, in both directions, either make it productive or kind of hang out. I've watched a few. I've, I, I, I haven't jumped on, um, I haven't jumped on some, I've watched a few because I guess they were on Facebook live and stuff like that. And I've seen what it's all about in, in there. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I I'm still working through this, right? Like through this whole work from home situation. You know, I have responsibilities being a host of Stogie Geeks. We we got content that we get out weekly. Um, I coordinate that with with Drew. We're busy with that. Uh, I'm busy with my day job. I'm busy with my marketing business as well. Um, I got a lot of smaller companies that are in my marketing business versus my day job over at Security Weekly. And, you know, so I'm hearing like all different stories from the cybersecurity companies and what their pivot plan is now. Um, also, you know, what our business is going to do when it comes to conferences. Not only the TAA has been canceled here in the premium cigar industry, the, um, you know, the, the PCA is up in the year, uh, all of these expos, if you will. Uh, you know, most of us who have day jobs go to expos if our industry warrants it and whatnot. That landscape's going to change. Regardless of any restriction rules, the attendance is going to suffer in some capacity for it. There's still going to be people who are going to be reluctant to travel or, or you know, want to jump on a plane and go to a conference in there. And I think it's really bringing a, a, a super cool awareness. And I think that if you could still be able to conduct business within these virtual hearths, um, I think if you're a brick and mortar who is not online, uh, it's a great intro for you to be exposed to the online world. And it, you might be able to pick up some some kind of tips and tricks uh, if you weren't online. That was the really the, the the reason why I wanted to mention it here on the Story Geeks because uh, I I either find the, the the brick and mortar participant business owner to be pro online or just not online at all. They're really not a couple that are just kind of fledgling. In my experience here in the Northeast, there are there there are some pretty cool powerhouses here in the northeast uh twins tobacco uh with kurt kendall's place uh kathleen's place over at uh queensbury new york uh cup of you know they they they, they have a, a bigger online presence but they're also like a little bit more established within their business models so so my message to the to to the brick and mortar owner is uh, go out there and participate in this, and it's a great way for you to check the um, temperature or guide of your consumers that are out there, and and it's a great way to get online. If if you need help with that, you can email uh, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. I can give you a quick introduction uh, to, to to Zoom and and set you up. Uh, if you wanted to go that route, because most of them are participating in either that or a Facebook live thing where they can just kind of type in and chat. But I really think that the virtual herfs is, is a great way for the consumers to um, get out there and to talk about what's been on their mind, which is mostly these restrictions and staying home. And you get together with some friends and you might hey, meet Joe. some new friends. Yep. Joe, I want to interrupt for a minute because I think that. Yeah. You are you are like so right on point with this, and I think that maybe we could help some of those brick and mortars with a recommendation yeah. for how to execute on it. Um, yeah. It's my personal gut feel. You know, every bartender I know they're doing virtual herfs with each other. 
And there's kind of a glamour and glitz that goes with something when we're all isolated. But if I were in their shoes, I would think about the guys who have technology background that smoke in their shop. And if you don't know how to do Zoom yourself, start spinning up some Zoom herfs around your store because it also gives you an opportunity to maybe you could sell some boxes or help your clients out while they're doing it. And you don't break apart that community that normally happens in the store. I think if you leaned on a couple of your Patreons that enjoy sitting in your store, if you don't know how to do it, that you could get it up and running and, and really kind of rebuild that community, which will be important the longer we're disconnected physically. The, the sizzle may fade a little on some of this stuff, but I think that they could do a great service in reconnecting their community that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I yeah. think, it, you know, if I were a business owner who wasn't online and I owned a brick and mortar, first thing I would do is I would be going to square.com, right, and doing a Square account, right? Uh, they do have the one where you swipe the card. Obviously, you have to have physical contact with that. But also, Square has a product that I use for my personal business where I can email them an invoice. I mean, you can email them an invoice. They're going to keep it all tallied up. Taxes will be taken care of in your 20 what, – what year are we in? 2020 schedule, right, uh, as far as income. And, 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 and it's a great way – for you, like you could meet with someone in a virtual hearth and probably take box orders and ship them and keep it going somehow. And if they cross reference that with your drop ship program and a couple, now you're going to get three or four or five different sources of income and begin to put together your revenue stream. Right. And it's begin a secondary to put revenue together. stream, right? Yeah. Because ultimately you, yep. you need you, you need revenue to 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 survive. I mean, I've I I met with Drew on Sunday of last week talk about the possibility of offering cigar shops like their own page and then and 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 having them go to there and then they can take an order and then we would they would take care of the shipping on their end and then do that there. And so again, the, the the reluctance I got on my end was just like, yeah, you know, I don't know what we're gonna do, blah, blah, blah. but you can't sit there in this environment in 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 and not do anything. You know what I mean? You have to try to really get yourself out there, and this might be the kick in the butt that you need to start to consider having a virtual herf online and potentially taking orders for your brick and mortar shop and, and, and getting it going. Cause they like, cause, cause they, the, lo the, the business loyalty is there cause they frequent your shop, right? They can always jump online and get a product, right? But they go to your shop sure. for a specific reason. And I think that they should focus on that reason and keep that positivity up because we don't know how long that these these restrictions are going to take place. Yeah, Joe, I, I think yeah, that's that spot on. Thank you for helping people build that kind of secondary plan and strategy. If there's anything we can do at McAuliffe to help people, they're not in our partner program and need to talk to us. Uh, we're certainly out to serve the uh, brick and mortar retailers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Dan. Uh, I want to thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Please don't be a stranger. Thank you, guys. It's a wonderful experience. You've got a great team there who's also helping you, and I, I appreciate everything and uh, appreciate your audience taking the time to hear our story. Right, and I want to thank our producer, Johnny, who's the only one who is allowed to report to studio to have this all going on. Thank you very much, Johnny, for keeping it going, you, not only on this side, but on the Security Weekly uh, side as well. Uh, great job. I still miss Johnny's hospitality of, I mean, I have my lighter, my cutter, my water, my Bloody Mary, everything given to me when I'm in the studio. And this is week two that I've had to fend for myself. I think I'm going to go probably a couple <laughs> more weeks. I don't know. I'm, I'm like struggling over here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy it's crazy but yeah uh stogie geeks i want to remind you that behind every cigar there is a story worth knowing when you can and when it's safe again i want to encourage you to get out there and shop local and get out there and support your local businesses also uh if if uh stogie geeks reach out to your local brick and mortar and ask how they're doing and you know if you're running a little low on cigars Maybe they can help you out uh, some way. I know 
uh, each state is different. They're doing curbside here in Rhode Island, online orders, and then some of them are doing delivery services. It, it, where the business owner is getting creative as more and more restrictions are taking place. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to McAuliffe Cigars, Placencia Cigars, Havana Cigar Club, and J.C. Newman. Uh, they're Stogie Geeks. I want to encourage you to sign up for the Ambassador Program. Go to stogiegeeks.com and click on the McAuliffe logo, and you can uh, participate in all the stuff that Dan, Drew, and myself had uh, spoken about today. And it's a, a great way for you to get in touch and meet new friends. Email all of your complaints to Drew at StogieGeeks.com. If you want uh, <laughs> set up online or whichever, you can email me at Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Guys, thank you very much for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Stogie Geeks, we'll see you next time. Be safe. Mm-hmm.